Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. Now, fake news or hoaxes, usually in the form of misinformation, spin, outright lies, and fabrications, have existed many years. In recent times, however, social media and other new digital tools seem to have taken fake news a notch higher. The impact has been visible, including lack of trust not only in the traditional news media, but also key governance institutions. Ghana has had its own share. An example is when MP for Timor West, for example, Titus Glover was pronounced dead when in actual fact he was in London on official duty. The question is, what is the traditional media doing to uh, deal with this uh, problem? I have in the studio here with me Jerry Sam. He is the programs director of Pemplers Byte, and they are conducting a research on the uh, uh, on fake news. By the way, ahead of my chat with him, we've been engaging some Ghanaians on their perspectives of fake news. Well, we'll bring you that uh, box in a bit, but I have him with me right now in the studio. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, so let's talk about fake news. Um, this is a project that's ongoing. Yes, we did, we did a research and um, the whole idea is that we want to find out how we can get newsrooms to deploy technology to keep it spread. Wow. Yeah. Getting newsroom to deploy yes. technology. We'll talk about that in a bit. But are you done with the study? If you are, what did you find? So we, we, we are done with the study and we, we found very interesting results. Mm. One of the shocking ones that we found was that 92% of the newsrooms that we, we engaged mm -hmm wanted governments to come in and introduce legislations and policies to control how the media works. In fact, one newsroom actually called that... The, the newsrooms yes, want government the to journalists. control yes. information yes. flow? Really? Yes, and some even called that uh, the criminal libel law should actually be reintroduced because of you know, the spread fake of news. fake news. But Is there a, 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 are there any other alternatives that were suggested? Because... Uh, I'm not quite sure personally. Uh, if no, this is just one, one of the results. Um, right. The other key thing also that we found was that most of the newsroom do not have a dedicated budget to fight new, uh, uh, fake news okay. or even have dedicated staff assigned to monitoring social media or monitoring online assets mm. to find out when news breaks, how do we verify it. So um, on, on a broad base, most of the traditional newsrooms mm. Um, see the problem as uh, not near me or it's from afar. Yeah. It's something that has not really reached Ghana yet. It hasn't actually affected the way people consume news yet. So we're just, we're just letting it be. And um, we haven't actually made any attempts. So there's no columns mm. in the newspapers dedicated to newsrooms. So you have done very well. You've given us airtime mm. to talk about fake news. But mm. there's, you know, most of the newsrooms don't have segments or uh, airtime dedicated in how to educate. Well, perhaps because it's a new trend, and uh, like you said, yeah. it seems that the media is really giving it time, yeah. and because it hasn't been, it hasn't been so big in Ghana, even though it was, uh, I, I think, during the election. During elections, 2016, uh, especially yes. also in America, right? Uh, elections as well, where fake news actually became. Mm. First, we used to call it false information. Right. And uh, now it's all fake news. So um, those are the, key, in some of the key things key that we found. Points. But what what, what was uh, reassuring, it was interesting for us, was that. Uh, a lot of the newsroom also try to find time to verify and validate news. Be but as in news before they before put it they, out there. Before they put news. it out. But well, that's course, a fundamental course, journalistic of course, principle. Of course, so. of course. But then the worry also is that uh, usually when we're in journalism school, you know, you are told to do two-step verification. But now what fake news is doing to us is that the uh, verification sources that you're going to, you know, go to to uh -huh. see whether the news is actually true or not can't also be fake websites. <laughs> so I can, I can create a content you know, um, just on a general definition of the fake news is made up news. Mm. So I can make up news, put it up on my website, and create two or additional websites also pushing the same news. So, so if, if you, you try to check in a rush it. to break the news mm. and you pick up from all these three sources, you think you are cool. You publish it and then you realize that it's fake news. Wow. So yeah. you're looking into the problem. Are you also looking into the solution? Yes. Yes, we what, are. What, what do you have to report so, on So that? We, we, we're looking at a multi-pronged approach. So what is wh that? Wh what we want to, want to look at is, first of all, training, media literacy. So, you know, one of the things also we found out that um, part of the budget, not, apart from the budget not being dedicated to train journalists, hmm. um, journalists also in the newsrooms are not sent on uh, refresher courses uh, to go and upgrade themselves right. on cutting and trend, uh, trends that are used to fight fake news. And also, we're also calling for a bit of legislation 
or policy direction to control information to to to, to guide us. Mm. So a lot of the newsrooms did say that they have uh, policies uh, in how they, they do go about their work. So you go in there and it's just a pager. Sometimes it's just convention. So you come to a newsroom and tell you that, oh, in this newsroom, this is how we do it. But it's no written uh, test. So if there's a policy to guide, but not restrictive. Also, what, what, what we're looking at also is that um, there, sh there, should be, there should be self regulation where our peers are able to sanction us when we go wrong. Mm. But you also, see, the thing mm. about the fake news is that it usually doesn't come from qualified or professional journalists. It comes from people who are uh, blogging somewhere, people who are just somewhere, creating the, the, the problem. So I'm quite curious about what the solution could be. You spoke about journalists wanting technologies or wanting their newsrooms mm. to deploy technologies to deal with it. And I'm not quite sure. How? Is there anything so one, like one that? Of the, one of the key things that came out, which mm -hmm. was actually one of the suggestions from uh, a newsroom, um, was that if there could be an online platform so our online platform beyond our traditional WhatsApp, because mm -hmm. there are WhatsApp groups as well, which um, sometimes you hear news and you clue and put it on yeah. a WhatsApp group to yeah. say, well, have you heard this news? Yeah. But then this will be an online platform that is made up of not only journalists in Accra, mm -hmm. but all over the country, and even can be assessed by international journalists as well, in that if there's a news uh, break that is put up there, then the journalists themselves can verify the news. So everybody will know that, yes, it is Jerry who put the news up there first, and Jerry wants verification. So nobody goes ahead to bring the news ahead of you, but your peers within that platform. So it's a platform that helps you to cross-check news that is put up there. Now, at the same time, what we're also proposing is that uh, the Ministry of Communication or Ministry of Information so also set up an online platform that has the capability of social media tracking okay. so that they can track news that is put up on social media the ones that are fake are clearly put up as fake wow. and then also we have a listing of trusted websites so those listings will have the brand or the logo to say that these mm. are trusted sources mm. but journalists you know at uh, technology at the speed of a push of a button you can actually verify and validate your story yeah. from trusted sources who are all being accredited that sounds really good mm. that sounds really good but have you made any progress with the ministry and and with these so we are still engaging as we are engaging you at the moment so what we're planning to do is that at the end of the day we're going to package it and go to the ministry and present and present what some of okay. the recommendations are okay and are you looking forward to do more uh, surveys or is this the end as far as fake news is concerned no we are looking to do more we're looking to do more we, we're looking to go deeper into just do traditional this time we combine um traditional online yes, and converged media, media. Okay. but then we realize that is the traditional media that's where usually the problem is because most of us are actually moving towards uh, user user generated content yes. and how do we how do we solve the problem of just taking everything in and, and, then, it and, and pushing it that's and true. then also how do we avoid um, clickbaits uh, so you see a very attractive headline that leads you to go and click on the on, on the full story and realize that the content and the headline is just really mismatched. Totally different yeah, things. Totally different. Yeah. So how do we detect all of these things? And then we'll find a way of actually building a capacity of newsrooms and how they great. can actually great. use technology to, to do their work. It sounds really great to me. Maybe one suggestion that I could put in would be that usually people have complained about the consumption because the consumption of fake news is also what makes it uh, what boosts the demand, if you like? So maybe in the future you can also work so on the So one thing that we actually well. actually also proposed and recommended was that um, citizens, the consumers, uh, you know, we encourage them to use multiple sources in consuming news. Right. So you just don't go to one website, pick it up, and start sharing or putting up on social yeah. media. You want to verify you use multiple other... sources in consuming yeah. news before you go out there sharing or liking. Okay. Thank you so much for coming, Jerry. Thank you. Sam is a programs manager of Pemplus Byte. So uh, immediately, what should we look forward to, by the way? So immediately, you should expect uh, Pemplus Byte, what we always do is we always develop in digital tools to enhance the work of journalists. Right. So we should, we'll be coming up with something that... Digital um, tools. I'm personally looking forward to Yes, newsrooms to adopt and adapt in you know, their news uh, generation okay. cycle. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Like I said, I'm very uh, enthusiastic. I'm looking forward to those digital tools that will help us away from fake news. But, but, but by the way, even before we go away from fake news, why don't you just uh, take a, a cue or two from this conversation? Uh, not everything you read on the Internet is true. Not all the websites 
are for real, so you want to verify before you consume the news that they give you. Well, 